Welcome, builders of the internet. My name is Jessa and I work in construction. 10th of October marks World Mental Health Day, so I thought I would share some quite, well, disheartening facts about mental health and the construction industry. This topic probably isn't at the forefront of most people's minds. However, I have some shocking statistics today that will hopefully make you consider it just a little bit more. I'll also be covering some of the potential causes, who is most affected by these statistics, and some potential solutions. It's building on my mind. Just a quick note before I begin. A lot of the research out there is based on the male population of the UK construction industry. This is because, well, one, I'm in the UK, so it's easiest to access this information, and two, males take up about 90% of the UK construction industry. So if you'd like to see my resources, you can find a link in the description below. Back to the first, it's estimated that around 70% of construction employees suffer from some kind of stress-related mental health symptoms as a direct result of working in the industry. This leads to around one in five workers calling in sick and the industry losing around 400,000 workdays per year with issues directly related to stress, depression or anxiety. Back to the second. According to a survey conducted by government researchers, over 95% of respondents from the construction industry had some level of stress caused by having too much work to do and too little time to do it in. I'm sure it's like this in so many industries, however, through my knowledge of construction, I know that there aren't enough workers and there's actually sort of a fear that there'll be a skills shortage within the next decade. Employers are finding it hard to fill around 20% of vacancies and the construction industry has the biggest reduction in workers under the age of 30 compared to other sectors. And lastly, but certainly not least, suicide rates for some workers in the construction industry are thought to be up to 80% higher than the general working population. Two studies, one in the UK and one in Australia, have found that this rate is substantially increasing over time. So who is most affected by these statistics? Well, a lot of the places that I got this research from seem to say that it affected low-skilled workers the most. Now, I wasn't 100% sure what a low-skilled worker was, so upon a bunch of Googling, learned that there isn't really one single definition for it. An unskilled labourer is thought to be somebody with limited skills or that provides minimal economic value for the work that they do. And the difference with a low-skilled worker and an unskilled worker is that there's the additional factor of not necessarily needing education or training in order to become employed. The construction sector actually provides a lot of manual and operative jobs which falls under the low-skilled labour category. This includes jobs such as general labour, painting and decorating, ground works, bricklaying and plastering. But why is this? Why is it that these jobs and construction sector in general has these extreme numbers, especially compared to other industries? The strongest predictor of these mental health problems is thought to be due to work-life balance. Working long hours and having too much to do in the available time, as mentioned before, are two consistent stresses within the multitude of careers in the construction industry. This could especially be the case in the construction industry as there are always urgent deadlines where if you end up even being just a day late, this could result in thousands upon thousands of pounds of financial penalties. The nature of a lot of jobs in the construction industry is that there are many short-term contracts. People tend to move from one project to the next. So they could be moving place to place as well, so all over the country or even all over the world. As well as this, construction has the highest amount of self-employed workers compared to other sectors. So these factors combined with a fluctuating job market results in a lot of work insecurity. If there is uncertainty about, say, when the next paycheck is coming or how you'll be supporting your family, you can imagine this would have such a draining effect on someone's mental well-being. Some other stresses directly related to the types of jobs you get in construction include handling the safety of others and having dangerous jobs. 
For example, some people have to ensure that the public doesn't get affected by the works and that their fellow colleagues are operating safely and aren't harming themselves or others. With having dangerous jobs, there are many people who have to work from heights on scaffolding, who have to operate heavy machinery and dangerous machinery, and even working on highways where you're very, very close by to speeding vehicles. There is so much overlap between physical and mental well-being. So having these additional physical stresses can really increase levels of stress and anxiety, ultimately taking its toll on mental health too. My last thoughts for why construction mental health statistics are so poor is due to the macho culture. I've stumbled upon this word so many times in articles and as I've mentioned previously, the construction is a heavily male dominated industry. Our society has been shaped in such a way to make many guys feel less manly or feel that they're weak uh, for admitting their feelings and this makes it quite hard to even ask for help. Over 90% of people don't feel comfortable with telling their boss why they've taken days off. It's all well and good being aware of these statistics, but what can actually be done to help reduce the mental health issues in the construction industry? I guess arguably the easiest thing that can be done is helping raise awareness about it. For example, talking to others, sharing relevant videos, wink wink, <laughs> um, sharing other various social media posts that are relevant and help spread this information. Another thing we can do is when we're actually at work, keeping an eye on our colleagues who may be going through a stressful or strenuous time. There are some small signs you can be looking out for, but this changes for everybody because we all react to situations differently. But these include unexplained absences, um, if somebody seems to be more detached than usual, or maybe they're just not as observant or analytical in their work, or maybe they're lacking self-confidence. I know many people, myself included, don't feel like we're in a position to be talking to our colleagues about their personal matters or even sharing our own personal issues with everyone. However, it doesn't have to be so personal. You can give somebody a compliment. I feel like most people tend to respond well to positive affirmation. If you've noticed that they've changed their hair or if they've um, got a new tie or something and just compliment them on that, you could really make somebody's day. <laughs> I know when some people have complimented me, um, I've been so happy about it and I've shared it to my friends like weeks and weeks later. Another thing to consider is if you have a mutual friend uh, that is in more of a position to ask, are they okay? Just give them a heads up that you've noticed something's been a bit off. Or I tend to prefer talking to people alone because it's easier to discuss personal matters that way. So maybe I would say to them something like, um, you know, hey, you've seemed a bit different lately. I'm probably picking up on something that's means nothing but i just want you to know i am here for you if you want to talk or if you just want to hang out or do anything i'm here <laughs> this is much easier said than done i know but you know at the end of the day what's the worst thing that can come out of asking somebody if they're okay if you're an employer or somebody in hr perhaps having some resources that people can access discreetly maybe within your website online somewhere or on a fancy IT database type thing. Uh, <laughs> there can be an allocated mental health first aider too, although people tend to reach out to informal sources for help more. It never hurts to have these people to just signpost to relevant sources or just to have somebody there that is welcoming and understanding to these issues. Some companies have internal newsletters as well, so it could be worth talking about, say, World Mental Health Day on the 10th of October or Mental Health Awareness Month in May. Opening up the conversation and having your own employees talking about it really helps normalise the conversation. And finally, there are charities specifically dedicated to helping mental health in the construction industry. There is a construction industry helpline run by the Lighthouse Construction Industry UK and the information for that is in the description. You can call this number and get free and confidential advice and sometimes they'll even help provide financial aid for the construction workers who need it the most. There's also Mates in Mind, which is a charity that helps employers develop a mental health plan, a mental health policy and helps your employees raise an awareness about it. There are so many other mental health charities out there if you're not specifically in the construction industry. 
for example, there is Young Minds, which helps young people under the age of 26, helps uh, sort of try and change policies about education, etc. And in October, they have a Hello Yellow campaign where you sort of wear yellow to show your support for mental health or just to help show some kind of awareness about it. I've been an activist with them for the past few years and it's been such an amazing experience to see all the work that's been done. That's what I have to say about mental health and the construction industry for now. I hope it helps build on your mind. Thanks for watching this channel, it's building on my mind. Check out my other videos, but first hit the bell and comment, like, subscribe.